when Jung claims, for example, that you throw the baby out with the bathwater when you're trying to develop and become a socially acceptable personality, that happens in a different way as far as he's concerned for each of the genders. And so you, one of the prices Jung would say that we pay, and that this is a very modern idea in some ways, for growing up as a distinctly gendered society is that it's very easy for men to suppress and fail to develop, to develop those elements of their character that might be considered classically feminine and it's difficult for women to develop and express those aspects of their personality that might be classically considered masculine and, but so Jung believed that nested inside the shadow in some sense were the contrasexual capacities so for example for a man given what we know about the temperamental difference between men and women it may be that men could be more could develop the capacity for true compassion and care if they they could find that ability within what they've thrown out in the shadow and women for example could find the capacity to be aggressive and assertive because that's part of what they sh threw out during their stage of their course of development because of because of its a priori categorization as inappropriate behavior now that doesn't mean that Jung thought that there was that people should be raised without any gender identity that issue never came up for him he just thought that once you had established a personality that was sufficiently developed to be acceptable socially and functional on the individual level then you could have the opportunity to expand that personality and to take into yourself elements of, of perception and thought and behavior that you wouldn't have had the sophistication to be able to handle at an earlier stage of development so Jung would say perhaps that if you're a male you have to become masculine before you could become feminine and if you were a female the reverse is true but that if your development only stops with a narrow and categorical gender identity then there are elements that of, of, of being that you could draw on that aren't at your disposal and that will make you weak so the shadow breaks up into the anima and the animus and the anima is the female inside the male so to speak and the animus is the male inside the female and Jung believed that he could see those partial spirits manifesting themselves in people's behavior and so he talked about a couple of typical behaviors that he thought were associated either with anima possession so that would be in the case of a man or animus possession in the case of a woman and so he would regard if you ever talk to someone who's female who seems to respond to all of your propositions with nothing but argumentation for the sake of argumentation Jung would regard that as a manifestation of possession by the animus and if you ever talk to a man who is um, irrationally possessed by second-rate and futile emotions then he would regard that as possession by the anima so and you can see that if you watch for it and if you believe in such things um, the best thing to do when confronted with someone who's animus possessed is just shut up because you're not going to make any headway because the point of the argument of an animus inspired argument is to get you to argue not to win because by getting you to argue, the animus wins. <laughs>